single page applications need client side routing uh, what is client side routing client side routing means that uh, when the user clicks on various hyperlinks within your applications um, in a traditional old style application the entire page reloads and every asset in the page reloads but single page applications by definition since they are single page the full page reload should not happen anywhere within the application so every time a user clicks on any uh, hyperlink or changes the route in other ways uh, the original page should remain loaded and then uh, only the things that change are the components that are being shown to the user so the page re-renders without a full page reload now Svelte has a companion framework called Sapper uh, which makes all of this very easy uh, um, but then you have to use the, that sapper is both client and server side framework what if you don't you don't want to use sapper you want to use a different server side framework um, or a different technology your backend is different uh, from sapper but you still want to use Svelte on the client side and you want to use routing on the client side how do you do that well you do that using uh, client-side routing in one of my previous videos I showed you how to implement custom client-side routing uh, with page.js and uh, some some of your own custom component today we are going to use routeify routeify is very um, sophisticated uh, <coughs> I guess this framework you would call it uh, for Svelte client-side routing it generates uh, uh, appropriate code in the spirit of Svelte, which itself is a compiler, it generates the code that will make your client-side routing very, very easy. So let's take a look. Uh, first, what you do is you can go to uh, routeify. Let me just show you. Routeify dot now dot sh, right? That's where uh, the documentation is. Or if you go to github.com slash tech slash routeify, uh, it has a link to routeify.now.sh. But in any case, this is where the documentation is. Okay. And uh, when when we when we are done writing this app, we will have a a nav bar like this. And uh, if you inspect element, you will notice that clicking around in the nav bar uh, will not load anything from the server. You see, there are, there is a network. There are no network requests being made because this is totally client side routing. And so when, when we go to home, it's on localhost 5000. When you click about, uh, it, it shows slash about. And yet no network calls because uh, it is client side only routing. Uh, so even though the address bar in the, U, uh, the URL bar uh, in the browser changes, uh, but no full page reload is actually happening. So when we click on blog, we see welcome to my blog. And as you can see, blog is activated with a thick orange line below that. And then when you click on ins some uh, blog article, the URL changes to blog slash foo, some slug there. And then article is showing uh, slug equal to foo. So the point is, even in fact, you can click on the delete link within the article and it says blog slash foo slash delete. Are you sure you want to delete a slug with ID foo of type blog? Yes or no, etc. Okay, so these are the. This is what this is the what I mean by client side routing, and all of throughout this, no network calls were actually made. All right, so let's uh, implement this. So the first thing we will do is in VS Code we will open the uh, the terminal and then npx degate. Uh, so we are basically this is what we do every time we. Um, start a new Svelte application, we uh, dig it or clone this uh, Svelte.js slash template. And then we will call this one Svelte-routeify. OK, so we have cloned that. Let us open that in VS Code. So no, not this one, Svelte-routeify. Yeah, this is what we just created. All right, so when we do this, uh, first thing we should do is run npm install. This installs all the node packages that we will need. And if now we run npm run dev here, 
or instead of here if we just use vs codes features and click dev here we get the same results and if i now reload this um, okay so this is my hello world using this world starter template okay L first thing we will do is we will uh, gut out we will remove all the unnecessary things that uh, this template co already contains i went to main.js removed the parameter that i was passing to app i'll go to app dot Svelte and then remove everything, pretty much everything, almost everything, right? And the only thing I will keep is, uh, well, before we do anything, we have to add um, Routify to our project. So let me control C and end this and say npm. So if you look at the Routify documentation, it says you should copy this. Uh, npm install minus minus save dev so uh, routify is a dev dependency not a runtime dependency and copy this this is the package path at swell tech slash routify at next which means the current version let's do that the other thing now there are two ways to uh, choose a bundler one is the command line the, uh, the other is rollup itself so there is a rollup plugin we will get to that rollup plugin in a second. Let's just do the command line invocation first, CLI. For that, we need npm run all. So let, let's uh, copy this run, npm run all and say npm install, again, save dev, run all. So npm run all is needed so that we can run the run p command, okay? So once we do that, we will modify our package.json. We come to package.json. And what used to be dev becomes watch rollup. Okay, so watch colon rollup. And then we enter a new dev uh, script of our own. And that will be, um, oh, before that, we should also add a watch routify. Routify is, watch Routify is straightforward. You just run Routify. Keep in mind that Routify runs, when you run Routify, it runs in watch mode to begin with. And then now our dev becomes run dash P watch Routify and watch roll up. So this way, these two are running in parallel. Okay, let's save this. There is one problem though. If we run it like this, our um, build is broken because build will not run uh, Routify as needed. So this there is some gap in this documentation. What we should do is in order for us to run, remember Routify needs to run as part of build, right? So what we can do is we can say um, pre-build before you build, run Routify, but run it in single, what is it called? Single, uh, okay, wait, I forgot what it's called. There is a, it's in config.defaults.json, it says single build. Yes, so you run it in single build mode. Why in single build mode? Because you don't want to run a watch in pre-build. So pre-build will execute before build will execute. Okay, so let's run this, npm run build. And uh, there are some some warnings, but overall, okay. So it it says that uh, this your project does not have SRC pages directory. So let's create that uh, SRC new folder, SRC pages. So this is the directory in which you uh, you will put all your uh, Routify routes. What are right Routify routes? They are simply files. Um, so the default file, uh, the default route should be index.svelte. These are Svelte files and they become uh, Routify routes. So in here we will simply say, uh, this index.svelte we will say, uh, let's put a heading one, heading one. Uh, this is um, index or home page, right? So if I save this, now I have at least one route. 
in app Svelte, we have to change we have to add import router so this is what where we are beginning to do swell uh, sorry routeify specific things so you say swell tech import router from swell tech slash routeify and then in, so you, you can then instantiate the router as a component but router needs routes so you have to also say import routes from and this is where things get interesting swell tech slash routeify slash pmp slash uh, routes now if it doesn't exist let's make sure it, it begins to exist by running build again so node modules swell tech routeify tmp okay uh, let's see hmm. uh, i guess routes does not exist at this point uh, not sure why but we will see um, hopefully this will now the the routes are the actual routes that will be generated based on the pages you have okay so we come back in here in app.svelte and give routes property uh, with a value of routes now when your property and its value are the same uh, you just you can omit the property name and the equal to sign let's save this hopefully uh, hopefully we are able to run this let's check uh, npm run build uh, so there is still it seems to have might have worked but we don't know let's find out if it is going to work or not by running start let's run start and if this works then we are good no it didn't work so let's uh, control c end this and see if we can run dev instead let's see dev running dev oh i saw a big time error there it says the folder does not exist src pages does not exist oh oh oh, oh that's the issue um, i created src inside src and that's the issue let's move pages to src and get rid of this extra folder src inside src okay now i think let's uh, control c end this let's do run build again let's run start and reload ah this is index home so let's see what is going on uh, you have app component which you mounted in your main.js you mounted that into your application uh, then app component simply imports the router from routeify and give it gives it the route that routeify generates at build time so now that it has only one route really which is um, whatever is in src pages and that is index.svelte okay now that all this is running let's kill this um, control c and run it in dev mode hopefully dev mode also works we will find out so uh, if i reload this now it still works that's good if i make some kind of a change to this uh, let's uh, uh, make a very trivial change this and voila this thing has a, a, an exclamation sign so at this point our routeify setup is working okay now this is the command line cli version of routeify setup uh, let me show you the the roll up version that i will show in a second let me just show you the general features of routeify so just like you have index svelte you can have another page a new file called about let's call it about dot svelte right and then you can give it some body let's uh, just give it uh, h heading one this is about page let's see save it okay and now if you go to slash about ah it doesn't work why does it not work good we caught a bug in our own system the bug is that this uh, our uh, server this uh, HTTP server that we are doing, SIRV, is not running in single page application mode. 
So we have to say single dash dash double dash single. When you run it like that, uh, of course, I have to restart dev server. So let me restart. And now if I reload, this is about page, right? Uh, what was happening was that uh, without uh, running it in single page uh, application, which is SPA mode, it does not serve index.html for every route, which is what we have to do in order to run it in. Uh, so about was not working, but of course the home page was always working. Now at this point, we are, uh, we are basically changing the URL in our browser uh, manually by typing it in. That's not obviously how anything should function. So let's create a nav bar. So in order to create a nav bar, uh, we can uh, we should know about layouts because we want the nav bar to be present in every page. So uh, we go to pages and create a new file called underscore layouts. Sorry, layout dot svelte. So underscore layout is basically the um, the layout of every page, which is either in the same directory or in a child directory for that matter. So let's. Uh, for that, we will create also a nav uh, component. So um, now nav component, I'm going to steal from, um, I guess from uh, from Sapper or some other place. But let's uh, let's first create the um, layout. So layout is going to be um, simply a nav bar and a slot, which means yeah, let's say create a, a nav bar which doesn't exist yet, we'll, we'll do that. And then you uh, render slot. What is slot? Slot is going to be about or index or whatever the, uh, the child page is going to be. For this nav bar to work, we have to create a script tag and import nav from nav, uh, current directory nav, or maybe we can go one level up, dot dot slash nav dot svelte. Now, of course, uh, this nav bar itself doesn't exist, so we have to make it exist. So here we go into SRC and create a new file called nav.svelte. Okay. So now nav.svelte uh, will have a few, um, you know, links in it. So let's create some links. Um, but let's generate them rather than writing everything by hand. So script. Um, and then let's create const links equal to, and these are going to be our links. Um, so we have index page dot slash index, and its uh, public name is going to be home. And we will have a an about page which is dot slash about, and I will explain why dot slash and its public name is about the label. And then let's add um, the blog page, blog, and its public name is just blog. Right. So now that we have these three, um, oh, sorry. Uh, let's render them all. So bound sign each links as, uh, we can say L or we can just say, uh, destructure it into uh, two parts. So first part will be the 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 path. Path. Second part will be the name, the public name of it. And let's close the each block. And a href. Let's do that. A href. And the href is going to be, um, I guess, uh, the path. And then the name. It will be the publicly visible name. Okay, and let's wrap this into a UL and LI. So UL, and then each one of these will become an LI also. So let's uh, say LI. Oops. And wrap the A inside that. So now what you have is each li okay so if i save this obviously this is not working quite yet and let's hope this works okay 
you see how you have home about and blog okay this is good but this is not these these links are not correct at this point if i actually click on home that's index that's fine about about page is good working too blog blog is of course uh, not working because uh, it doesn't exist yet uh, also we need a little bit of styling so let me just uh, copy paste some styling from somewhere else and here we are uh, copy the style okay there there's the style okay because i don't i mean i don't want to sit here and type a whole bunch of css in front of you okay there is oh this is the wrong place where i uh, copied it i shouldn't copy it here um, I should copy that into nav.svelte. That's where I, I need to need the styles. So here we have styles. The, the styles, the main thing is they, they point out which one is the selected uh, navbar menu link. Okay. Now here's the thing. Uh, our href should not be just path. We should ge generate these hrefs using Routify. So in order to do that, we have to import Let's import. Uh, let me. So yeah. So what we will in, import is we will import uh, URL, which is a, a helper uh, that generates URLs. So from Swell Tech slash Routeify. Let's import URL. And the, another thing that we should import is is active. Now is active is another helper. These two helpers. One of them lets us generate URLs, which we basically say dollar sign URL, and give it a path, and it generates absolute paths. So that's good. And then the second thing we have to do is we want to add the selected class. So class colon selected is equal to true only when dollar is active is true for the given path. So let me explain that. Let's save this. Hopefully, okay, something broke. Yep, oh, blog, of course, blog won't work. Um, if I reload, yeah. Oh, look at that. So if I click on home, the this is index, home is showing up, and there, there is a, an orange bar underneath the active link. If I click on about, the orange bar goes to about. Why is that happening? It's because we this class called selected gets added to about when about is active. And the class called uh, selected gets added to uh, home when it is active. But the fun, nice thing about all this is you don't have to use a special uh, tag or special component called link or something like that. No, you just use ahrefs and everything works just fine. Okay, so that's why we, uh, we do this. Okay. Um, so now home and about are working nicely. Uh, blog won't work because blog is. So first, before we make blog work, let's uh, have an, a 404 page. The 404 page is you create a new file called underscore fallback dot svelte. This is your 404 page. So we can just say uh, heading one, um, 404 missing. And we can say the path some path was not found. Let's see. Now, which what is the path? So let's we can we can figure out our own path um, by using import route from at science well tech routeify. So route is another helper. Uh, let's. Uh, so what we have to do is we. The route is, by the way, you have to use dollar sign route, not route, uh, when you make use of it because it's a store. Route dot path. If we do this, watch what happens. Save it, and there it is. 404 missing. The path underscore fallback was not found. Of course, that is not what you want. Uh, let's just print uh, print what is in route. So console dot log um, route is whatever is the value of dollar route so let's save this and look at the oops not router just route sorry 
um, let's inspect and in console we will we will we will see what all is inside the route object and so the so the part that did uh, not match was leftover blog looks like so this is the path that we need to that that we need to account for so we can just say um, route dot leftover i guess this is this is the part that didn't work so okay we can put double quotes if you want around this we can or we can say code um, and then put um, yeah so there it is so this is the path blog was not found so this is how you get a 404 but there is more to it of course now we are going to add an actual blog so a new folder or a file let's create a file called blog slash index dot svelte so there it is and we, we can say now say heading one oops sorry heading one this uh, let's just say welcome to my blog save it and there you go welcome to my blog so about is working this is working and this blog is working you will notice that we did not create blog.svelte inside blog we created a folder called blog and index.svelte inside that that is also works this is how sapper works this is how most routing systems work you can just create an index within within a folder and it is same as creating the folder name.svelte file okay all right now let's create a few uh, articles underneath that uh, we will create, so let's say, UL, LI, okay, and, um, and make them hyperlinks. So let me just say UL, LI, A, href, and the href is going to be, let's see, uh, once again, we will create links, right, remember? So we could either say blog slash foo or better than that, we could use uh, Routify to generate th those links for us. So here we go, script, import URL from Svelte Tech, uh, Routify, and when it comes to generating the link, we simply use dollar sign URL Remember, URL is again a store, so use, you use dollar sign, and then uh, give it a path. And the path that I'm going to give it is, uh, let's say, foo. Let's let's give it dot slash foo, which means it will create it under blog, and then uh, it will be foo. Let's say, and then let's just repeat this. And we have slash bar. This will be called bar. And this will be slash lum. Let's say just we are just generating some random words. Lum. Okay. So now that you have this, you got foo bar lum. So this is we are simulating our blog. Now there is a problem here. Uh, blog slash index slash foo. Mm. Blog slash index slash bar so that is slightly different from what i was expecting uh, let me see why that is the case um, hmm. uh, i don't want to use blog slash index we i just want to use the short name but that's not okay um, let's see if i just use these let's see what happens and if i now hover on these these are okay no they don't work either so what if i simply say blog slash bar and blog slash foo and everything it might not work either bro so if i ho hover on them uh, okay that kind of worked kind of okay either way 
so let's uh, save this. This gives me the block. Now, when I click on it, it says 404 missing. Um, the path blog slash foo was not found. Obviously, it was not found because there is nothing that maps to it. Now, in order to map it, we will create a new uh, file called sl square bracket slug or ID or whatever you want to call this, some placeholder dot swelt. So as long as you have a variable parameter here, the, the last part of, of the URL will map to it. And now you can create a script tag, export a property, export let slug. And this will, because the name of the file is square bracket slug square bracket, it will map to this exported uh, prop. And now we will say, let's say h heading one, um, article, let's say blog article, and then slug, let's see this, right? And then we could just uh, generate some random content, each uh, zero, one, two, three, four, let's see, right? As I, let's say, close the each, and then create a paragraph. Um, dummy text colon I for whatever the slug is. So I'm just I'm just generating some random stuff. Dummy text. So once you do that, you have blog ar article foo, which is coming from this heading one, and then dummy text zero one two three four for foo. And now you go back to blog, click on bar, and you say dummy text for bar zero one two three. And you go back to blog, click on lum, and you say blog article lum, and then all this good stuff. So this is uh, all coming because of um, Routify. So this is great. Okay. So now you are able to create um, a single page application with client side routing with Routify. Uh, one thing before uh, we finish, we should show the other way of uh, compiling routes and that is using the route uh, rollup um, roll uh, plugin okay so the way you do that is you can go to uh, let me close everything oh one more thing I, I just wanted to point out is what if I had uh, what if I wanted to delete articles and uh, and or uh, any other type of thing right? So one way to do that would be to say, um, to create a, a folder um, under slug and call and give, put a page called delete.svelt. Or what if I wanted to do generically for anything, right? So the way you, any type of uh, entity. So p under pages, we can create a file called um, some type, which would be blog or user or anything, slash, some uh, ID slash delete dot svelte. Okay, so now uh, what it did, did it is it created two folders: uh, square bracket type square bracket and square bracket ID square bracket. And then we can say um, that you know uh, we can say that heading one. Are you sure you want to delete? something with the given ID um, and of type, this type. Now, of course, these two have to be declared. Remember, these are uh, path parameters, in it, right? So you have to create a script tag and say export let type and ID. So hopefully, uh, these path parameters will automatically map to these two, right? So let's see if that works. And and since you're going to delete it, there should be a button for uh, yes, which is confirm, and another button for no, just cancel the deletion, right? So let's see if this works. Um, okay. So now we do that, we need a link to deletion, right? So there is no link, delete link here. So let's add that delete link. Uh, we go into the um, the blog art, yeah, here. Let's add a delete link, and we will say a 
sorry a href and this will be again we will use url links um, so we could just say import url helper from swell tech routeify and let's generate the url uh, dollar sign url and this will be um, blog slug and we are generating this with slug and uh, delete okay the only problem is it has to be a an interpolated string so let's do that uh, and then we will put a text of delete on it okay so now we got the link now on hovering let's see if this actually works no it says blog slash blog slash foo that's not what we see if i click on it yes yeah, blog blog foo so initially uh, at least we shouldn't have the leading blog in this let's see if this works hit back and when i click delete it says blog foo delete yes are you sure you want to delete uh, foo slug off type undefined oops so oh, by the way i also miss miss spell type but in any case that the type type is not getting mapped correctly okay uh, and i am i have not been able to figure out why that this parameter type parameter does not get mapped uh, not to worry i have either my understanding is not correct or there is a bug i don't know which one but the workaround i have a workaround and the workaround is you can say import params from this is another helper swell tech routeify right if you import the params then you can say type equal to dollar sign params dot type and that works uh, you can make it a reactive statement also if you want uh, either way this should work Let's see if it does. Oh, there it is. Yep, it did work. As you can see, type equal to blog now. You can confirm, cancel, whatever. So this is uh, this is pretty good. All client side routing. Uh, let's just f make one change. Uh, see if we can use the routeify. Uh, we can change rollup instead of this. Um, so the way you do that is, all you have to do is, um, let's go back to our package.json and remove. Sorry package.json and remove uh, or undo the the other changes we 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 absolutely have to keep this change uh, the single page application mode of serve but everything else we can go back to the way things were which means we can uh, we don't need uh, let's uh, just to rename these things let's uh, underscore dev you don't need uh, roll up you don't need routeify and build is build pre-build remains oh no you don't need pre-build um, and our original dev becomes the current dev so this is this is how things were. I, I, I put double underscores in front of these things because I don't want to totally delete them. I, I want to keep them around. So now this is what your your uh, role uh, your package.json used to look before we made uh, any routeify specific changes. So let's just save that. And and to bring routeify in, we have to edit rollup.config.js. So this is how. So what we will do is we will go into rollup.config.js and import routeify into that so here mm, so we imported routeify okay and the next thing we will do is we will add a plugin called routeify here so in order to for that to work you have to put routeify as a plugin routeify plugin as the very first plugin okay so all this will work, but there is one problem. You'll see what the problem is in a second. I killed that server. Now, if I run dev, uh, the problem is Routify is going to run in um, 
in a watch in watch mode we don't want it to run in watch mode so in order for it to do a single time, one time compile you have to give it options and the option is going to be single build mode and that should be true but well it may not be uh, so you can make it a single build true in this case uh, for and be, because if you don't do that then uh, our Okay, let me let me just show you what happens when I when I comment this out. When I comment this out and I say npm n npm run build, this is generated routes and now it it's never ending. It's not dying. That's because this is running in watch mode. So let me kill this. Instead, you make this single build true and npm run build now finishes the only problem is if we want to run it in watch mode when we are going to um, uh, run it in dev right so what you do is you use this production variable so single build is true when production is true this works perfectly so now uh, run build ends on the other hand, when you run dev, it will run continuously in the watch mode. Let's see if that happens. Reload. So this part is working. This is working. This is working. Click on this. Work works. Right. Let's make some uh, small change so that we know that the dev mode is working also. So we go to home. All right. So let's open the index yeah. and say. Uh, we are using routify save and there it is we are using routify so dev, hot uh, reloading live reloading is working everything is working good so this is the one change that you had to make you imported the uh, the routify uh, plugin you injected that plugin in here before Svelte compilation occurs, but you did have to make sure that single build is true when production is true and single build is false when production is false. Okay, we are almost ready to wrap up. There is one more thing, and that is um, code splitting. That's right, you can do code splitting in, um, in Routify. Let's take a look. If you go to the guide and look at code splitting, it says in your CLI mode, you just do minus D. We, want, we instead will be using this one. We just have to say dynamic, we will use a roll up configuration, right? So you just make sure you say dynamic imports equal to true. So just say dynamic imports true. This will do it will do code splitting, which means it will split. Instead of having a single bundle.js, you will have separate uh, route, uh, separate JS files for each route. Let me just show you what I mean. Uh, you do have to change the output. So let's uh, duplicate this output block because we are going to use code splitting. That's why we have to uh, change this output. So source map can be true. Format is not going to be IIFE. Uh, immediately invoked func function expression. Instead, the format is going to be ESM, uh, ECMAScript module. Name can remain whatever it is. And, the, and the, instead of file equal to uh, public build bundle.js, you will give a directory. So you delete file and you say, all my f uh, modules will be in the directory called public slash bundle. All right, let's see if this, uh, let's save all this and oh one more thing in your in your index.html we used to say just include bundle.js deferred instead you will say script type equal to module defer yes but then source equal to main.js so let's do exactly that copy this and open index.html which is in our um, public directory uh, comment out this one and inject this one so it says type equal to module defer src is bundle slash main.js so this becomes the entry point let's see if this works um 
I guess we can run dev now. Either dev or production doesn't matter at this point. Let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. Reload. Did you see? Yes, it's working. Look, there is no single bundle.js. Look at these. These are all different .js files. Nice. If you click on about, about, about uh, module code is loading. If you click on blog, that uh, loads the index.svelt from the blog directory, which is somewhere here. You see it, it corresponds to this file. Um, and now if you click on any particular blog item, it goes and loads the slug.svelt. If you click the delete, it's it's loading the delete uh, component. And from this point onward, since we have visited every place, there will be no more new requests. And as you can see, none of the requests are happening. But the big thing is that there isn't a single bundle.js, but there are all these little bundles. If you uh, take a look at what they look like, ls minus l public build. Uh, so, oh no, this is the other one, bundle, and look, these are all the bundle uh, files, you know, the, this is this, the code split JavaScript files, and as you can see, they are, they're much smaller than, um, well, of course, main.js is big, but others are so, pretty small, look how small each one of them is, so the re loading at, uh, at the last moment, um, the loading of these uh, JavaScript files is faster because they have been code split. So hopefully uh, you have a better understanding of how to use Routify. Routify is a beautiful framework. It, uh, it, it does almost everything that Sapper will, will do. This will also, uh, it's ready for progressive web applications, PWAs. Um, hopefully you are now excited to use Svelte if anybody objected to oh, how come Svelte doesn't have good routing framework on the client side, uh, your answer now is Routify. But if you can use Sapper, you can uh, then you should probably because SAP Sapper will turn your Svelte application into a PWA right out of the box. It will do preloading, prefetching. It will give you a lot of other features. But if you cannot use Sapper on the server side, then you should use Routify. I think Routify is a beautiful framework and it follows the spirit of Svelte, which is, um, you know, generating code or compiling code. All right, so I, I would like all of you to uh, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification alerts and, uh, you know, give a lot of, uh, give me a lot of comments and feedback on what else you would like me to be uh, showing here on this channel. Thank you.